Hey guys, I'm finally back again. I'm sorry it's taken me so long um, to get back to the tail here for our red panda. Um, my assistant is off on maternity leave, so I am running the whole ship, and uh, I've been a little bit harried. Anyway, so here we go. Um, I've decapitated our little um, red panda because we were looking at the head in the last video. And um, so on this one, we're going to be working on creating this layered striped tail. Um, this sample, again, is in the peat moss color here, um, which I don't yet have available in my color card, but I hope to soon. Uh, and here is the sample uh, that we're working on, and this is in the spice color, which is the color of the fox, which is also a nice color for our red panda. So. Over the last week, I um, snuck in some time and got this little pattern for the tail made up. So these are the pieces that you'll be cutting in the spice, and these are the pieces you'll be cutting in the white, um, and these are the cut out pieces. And this piece right here, you'll cut in black, and that's the tip of the tail. Um, so I've got all those pieces cut, and uh, partially assembled so I can show you how this all goes together here. So additionally in your pattern you'll get this tail outline and that's what you're going to build the striped tail on. So um, let me just show you what I've got here. So I've got that um, attached to the back and I'm going to peel this up a little so you can see what happened here because I've got part of this stitched together. Um, all, the, all these pieces are sort of taped onto the paper to hold them in place so that we can do our sewing. Um, and when I place the tape, when I do those little rolls of tape, um, I'm putting them kind of like low here and low here. And then I'm sneaking in the white um, so that the front side is gonna look a little bit like clapboards, striped clapboards on a house. Um, and, and these pieces, all the brown pieces or all the spice pieces, are basically just all stacked right next to each other. And then we slip in the white. So I'll show you that on the last one that I've got here. Um, um, and the other thing that uh, I wanted to note is that the spice color has an overhang, and we're going to trim that off afterwards. Um, there is sort of a method to the madness of, of doing that, and that is that... If I cut all these pieces out to the exact size of the tail, once I stitched it together, this edge would end up not being very straight. And so if I leave these guys long and trim them back afterwards, I'll get a nice smooth edge that matches my pattern piece. All right, so here's what we do, right? So we've got this attached to our paper, and this is my white stripe piece, and I'm gonna put that in so that it's sort of halfway, um, it's split, right? So the um, it crosses the spice piece about at its midpoint right here. And then when I put this back up, it'll be tucked underneath the spice layer. Um, and so one thing that I've been noticing uh, in this new little system that I created is that it's easier to stitch this white edge to the spice and then go back and stitch this white edge to the spice. So on each of these um, I stitched this edge first and then I went back and did this. I stitched this edge first and then I went back and did this. Um, I'm not sure why but I think it's just the way that our paper backing moves and it makes it a little easier. So let's get started here. I've got a knot at the end of my thread and I'm gonna kind of start like we do sometimes with my knot back away from this edge because when we trim that off we don't want to catch our knot. So we'll just start there and then we're gonna do a whip stitch but we're just catching the surface of the spice color here and the edge of the white and that's because we don't want those stitches to show on the front. But if for some reason you do go all the way through and cat, you know, and um, and your stitch shows on the front, it probably won't matter too much because we're going to be doing all of that um, feathering or fringing of the of the um, 
of the surface of the tail. So that's probably all going to get hidden anyway. All right. Now, um, I created the system to, to do the stripes on the tail, but you can play around with it and, um, and create your own system if you want to. Uh, this was just the way that seemed like it was the most straightforward to me to create these stripes. Um, okay, here we are at the end. And I'm going to do that same thing where I move my knot back so it's not in the way of our cut line for later. Uh, right, scissors. Okay. So, here we go. One, two, three. And then we'll go back and do this other connection here. And I'm going to start my knot away from the edge again. That's a little long. go back and go through the surface of the white and catch the edge of the spice. And then again, we'll put our knot a little distance in from the edge. Okay. All right, so, so here's what we have on the side with the paper, and here's our finished side that's going to be the inside of the tail. And then I'm just going to do this. And trim off the um, trim off the spice. And there is our tail piece. So then we'll just remove it from here. And we've got all of our nice layers. Okay. All right, great. So then uh, on here, set that aside for a minute. So then here, we're going to do our fringing again.
like, oh, here's a little comb. You can kind of go through and brush out our layers here. Oops, it looks like I caught one of my I cut one of my little knots there. So let me just repair that bit. Yeah, no worries. If you uh, if you do that, you can just kind of go back and restitch over it. That's all hidden on the back, so it's never gonna show. So there we go, there's the tail, and then we're going to fold this in half and, and stitch the seam from the dart here up to the top of the tail, or you could go this way down to the base. Maybe this, maybe heading from this way down to the base is easier because of the, the way that these guys are layered together. So let's do that too. Get another needle threaded here. I might need to refocus again a little bit where I was sewing. Let's give that a try. Okay. All right, so uh, on this seam, just like um, most of our other seams, we're gonna use a whip stitch. And I hid that first knot in between the two layers um, there's so much fringing and, and so forth going on here that you probably wouldn't see it anyway, but it's just a little general thing I do at the beginning where a knot might show up. So with all the layers here, you might want to just, um, you just want to be careful that you catch everything as you're going going down your seam line so your seam doesn't bust out on you. And this seam line will be on the underside of the tail so again, it's sort of going to be in a spot that um, is not that visible, but you can also, uh, after the tail is all put together, you can brush out that edge or that seam line as well, and that would hide things even further. Now I'm getting down to the black and at this point I think I want to change my color of thread because this um, spice colored thread is really going to show up on the black. So I'll do a knot here. And see if I can bury that knot. Go back in the hole behind the knot 
and pop it through. Okay, I've got some black handy. make my thread a little shorter to do the end of the tail because I don't need quite as much and um, sometimes working with a thread that's shorter is, is a little bit easier it doesn't tangle as much okay just brush out the, um, the feathery edge that's caught up in the black Okay, I'll go to my knot again, and pop it through. Okay. All right, so here's our tail. Um, if you want to, I think I did that on this guy, is I brushed out the black a little bit um, at this point too, so that was sort of fuzzy as well. So why don't we do that? and then we'll go ahead and stuff it. We can finish up once it's stuffed and see if there's anything else that we want to work on as far as the, um, the fringing part goes. Okay. All right. So the other thing that we probably want here is to get our pipe cleaner in there. So I'm just going to take a pipe cleaner and slide it into, into the tail. And there's my skewer. So there's still room. It's a tight squeeze, but uh, we're going to do our stuffing through this little hole here. And hold on a minute. I've got to get some stuffing from my bag. Okay. So. Let's go ahead and just take small pinches and take the skewer and twist it. Helps to grab the stuffing. And you might want to go on, um, kind of move around uh, as you're as you're stuffing and stuff on both sides of that pipe cleaner, sort of at the front of the tail and then you can move this and stuff towards the back of the tail too. Right, so we're stuffing to the back side where the seam line is. Because this tail has um, so many seams in it and it's sort of so fluffy on the 
on the outside. I don't think it's really that critical to to stuff it so that it's super, super packed, just, just in case any of those seam lines have any weak spots. So go ahead and stuff it so that it, it looks sort of even and, and round, but, um, but don't, don't go crazy and pack the heck out of it. So I think that's probably pretty good. And then now that it's stuffed, I'm just gonna look at these little edges here and see if there's anything else I wanna do with my fringing. And when I get it just the way I want it, then I'll hit it with a little hairspray. So let's see, do a little bit more in this department and then we'll Give it a little shot of hairspray to hold things in place. So if you want to also, you can sort of pick some of this surface up if you want it to be a little less long. Just let me just give you a little, I've done this from time to time. I don't know if it really needs it here, but it's more of, this is more of a sort of technique, I guess, than a necessity on this particular guy. But if things, if your fringe got too long and you wanted it to be a little more organized, and cropped in a little. You can fluff out the whole surface and then you can just kind of give the length a little a little haircut if you feel like you feel like it needs it. And then the stripes are a little more prominent. instead of completely covering each other. I think I want this black to be, not have any of this other color on it. So there's our little tail. 
and let me just get the hairspray out. We'll hit it with that. All right. Where am I going to hold it? Okay, so that's it. Sometimes the hairspray, sometimes I like to just kind of like hit it a little bit with my fingers very lightly, not so I press the texture down that we just created, but just so sometimes the hairspray will leave these little um, tiny little droplets on the surface. And if those get just softened into the fibers, um, it looks it looks a little bit better. So. All right, so there is our tail. Um, and let's just also talk about the body here while we're at it on the tail. So what I did was I took the basic body of Felix and I cut it at the crotch because usually it, fold, you know, it folds underneath the body here. So I cut the front of the body out of black and the back out of spice and the arm unit and the leg unit is also out of black. And then what I did was take our um, micron pens and oh, this one's almost dead but but I tr I softened this transition between the black and the spice color just with the pen. And I went around all wherever there was a seam line and I just softened those two colors into each other um, using the pen all the way around under here and um, and all the way up. And then um, if you notice pictures of red pandas, they really have this kind of gentle transition. And so that's what I was trying to create there. So that's that. And then actually we need to come back to the head, I think. We had we have really one more video to do there, but I had several people asking me about the tail. And so I wanted to get that out first. So I will, um, I'll come back with another video as soon as I can. And we'll wrap up the red panda and then get started on the seal. Uh, okay, you guys, thank you so much. Thanks for sticking around this month and being patient as things got a little crazy for me in the studio. Um, see you soon. Thanks. Bye.